So in today's web dev tip, we're going to take a look at how you can set up a Netlify function and run it locally. So if you need an endpoint or you need some uh, data to interact with with your test app, uh, then this is a great solution because it's really quick and it enables you to actually uh, deploy your apps uh, directly to Netlify later on as well. Uh, so if you haven't already got it installed, if you just install the Netlify CLI, uh, so npm install global, and then it's the package is called Netlify CLI. And what this will give you is a command line interface uh, to set up uh, various different things in Netlify, uh, but this will actually run our functions for us. Uh, so we'll let that install. Uh, and in the meantime, what we'll do is we'll just create a new directory in our project. Uh, and by default, uh, where we put our functions for Netlify is in a folder called Netlify. And then inside of there, uh, a folder uh, called functions. So uh, when we create a function, we just create a, a plain JavaScript file. TypeScript and uh, Go, I believe, are also supported. Uh, but let's just create a new JavaScript file called hello.js. So a Netlify function is essentially an AWS Lambda. Uh, and what that means is that we need to follow the same patterns that we would uh, do for creating an AWS Lambda. And uh, the format is that there is just one function that's uh, exported from our file. And that function is the handler function. So to set that up, we say uh, exports handler. So we're just uh, on the exports object, we're creating a new property called handler, which is going to be our function. And we can use the async keyword here as well, quite safely. And this receives a couple of arguments, uh, event and context, uh, which has some information about how the uh, actual function is being called. Uh, but essentially what we need to do from this handler function is just return an object. So if we want to return some data, for example, we use the return keyword and return an object. This object has to have a couple of things. The first thing it needs to have is a property called status code. Uh, and this is the HTTP uh, response uh, code. So if it's a good response, we would uh, use 200. If you want to send a different response, such as a 400 or a 500, you can change that here as well. Uh, but we're returning a 200. And basically, all we need to send back is the body of the response, which is actually a string. Uh, so it will be, uh, in our example, we're going to send some JSON back. So all we need to do is provide a string in this body. So for example, uh, if we had uh, an object here that we want to send back, so uh, say data is equal to an object that has a property called hello and inside there is hello world and then all we need to do when we're constructing our body is just to say json.stringify uh, that data object okay so if we save that that's our function completed we just need a way of running it now uh, so we've installed the netlify cli package so all we need to say is netlify which is the cli command and then pass it the dev argument. And that will set up a dev server, uh, which if you have any front-end content, it will load that on, uh, on this particular URL here. Uh, but you can see here uh, in our output from the terminal that we've loaded the function hello. So that's the name of the function. It matches the file name. And then on this particular port here, we just open up a new tab here and uh, pass in the port. All of the functions are just labeled after this. So we could say hello is the function name. You can see there we've got the output from this uh, URL, uh, which is basically the stringified version of our object. And if we just uh, made some changes to that, for example, rerun the uh, request, you can see that that data updates as soon as we've updated our function. So as I say, this is a handy way of setting up some endpoints for uh, any apps that you might be working on, any front-end apps. So if you need an endpoint to provide some data or you just need to simulate a, a real API, for example, then this is a great solution. So that's it for working with Netlify functions locally. Stay tuned for more web dev tips.